Hi everybody, my name is Anthony and I'm a librarian at the uh, Stitcher Public Library. Uh, this is the last video in our seed starting series. Today we're going to go over uh, actually transplanting the seeds. In our previous videos, which you can find on the library's YouTube channel, we went over starting seeds indoors and then harvesting those seeds to get them ready to go outside. And now we're going to finish it up by doing some planting today. Okay, so generally there's two places that people plant their plants when they're ready to put them out in their garden. It's either in pots like this, either bigger or smaller, or they put them in raised garden beds or just right into the garden soil. We're going to cover the, the two major ways of, uh, of doing it. We're going to go over real quickly how to prepare each way uh, so the plants can get uh, dropped on it. Okay, so the first uh, thing we're going to go over is getting ready one of these pots. Now I have a small pot here but the process is the same for a small one like this or a huge whisk down pot. Okay, so one of the most important things to consider is your pot needs to have drainage holes on the bottom. A lot of them will come with holes, but some do not. So if it doesn't come with holes, you're gonna to have to drill holes in the bottom so the water can actually get out so it doesn't just kind of flood and uh, drown the plants. So once we have a planter that has the holes in it, we're actually going to put uh, some rocks down on the bottom to promote drainage even more. Uh, you can use bigger pebbles if you have them. You can use pieces of a broken up uh, clay pot. But in this case, I happen to have some pea gravel left over. So I'm just going to kind of coat the bottom of the pot with the pea gravel. Okay. And once there's pea gravel there, I'm going to take some potting soil. And I'm going to fill up the rest of the pot. I'm going to fit it up to the very top. Try not to make a mess. But... Keep filling it up to that top ring. I'll just give it a little more. Ooh, I'm going to get a little overboard. And I'm just going to pat it down a little bit. Not too crazy. Okay. And that's all we really need to do to prepare a pot with uh, pebbles and potting soil. So unfortunately my property doesn't lend itself well to having a garden either sown directly in the soil or uh, making uh, raised beds. Uh, there really isn't any room in um, areas that aren't shady, uh, so that doesn't lend itself too well to uh, vegetables and some living plants. So I do most of my stuff in um, bigger uh, pots. So in this case, if you uh, decided to put your uh, plants right into like uh, the regular soil, uh, you would mark out an area um, that you're going to turn into your garden, and you would actually go in with a spade shovel and uh, dig in about 8 to 12 inches and then turn the soil over uh, right in that same spot and then go around until you turn over the entire area uh, that you're ready to plant. Uh, this serves a couple of benefits. Uh, first and foremost, it actually breaks up the soil. Um, a lot of regular gardens um, and a lot of areas are really compacted, which does not lend itself well for uh, new plants to try to root and uh, spread into. So you really want to break that up by turning it all over. Um, while you're turning it over, it's also a good time to mix in either a quality garden soil, which you can get at most garden supply centers, Home Depot, Lowe's, anything like that. Or if uh, you have <clears throat> a supply of compost, uh, you can put that in there. And then if you really want to get crazy with it, you can throw some manure in there, uh, manure in there too. Uh, it's actually really good for the plants and your garden will take off uh, very quickly. Um, so once you have that mixed in there, if you decide to use an additive like that, uh, you're just going to rake the area flat, uh, but you're going to try not to really step on it. The whole point was to kind of keep the soil loose, so we really don't want to step on it now and then uh, pack it back down. Um, when you're doing like a, a raised bed garden, you're kind of following the same things. Um, if your raised bed garden has been around a few years, you're going to want to keep turning over the soil, adding new garden soil, adding compost, adding manure uh, to keep it fresh. Uh, specifically raised beds can kind of pull all of the nutrients out of the soil uh, and kind of leave not much there for the plants. So it's really important um, to kind of keep it fresh um, so the plants really have uh, some food in there to get going. 
And now that we've gone over a couple of ways to prepare uh, different areas for planting, we're actually going to take our seeds uh, that have been started indoors, hardened off, uh, just make sure that the hardening off process is complete. If you haven't seen that video, just be sure to check the library's YouTube page and go back and do that first. If you try to put these plants outside right away from inside, they can burn and uh, they'll go into shock and they may not make it. So anyway, now that we have these plants and they're ready to go into the ground and be outside, we're just going to take a plant we want out of the tray. Now these guys are morning glory, so fortunately I let them go a little long, so they're a little tangled up. So I'll try to tangle them the best I can. Oh, it doesn't want to seem to go either. Go for this one. Normally you won't have to do this. Don't let your morning glories go as long. Okay, so now that we kind of have one untangled and ready to go, we're going to try and get it out of the cell pack. Now, I see a lot of people want to pull it from the base of the root. Now, with some plants, you may be able to get away with that, uh, but I never recommend it. Uh, you might actually pull the roots or damage the roots, and that would be really bad for the plant. Okay, now the other thing you can do is take your finger, put it underneath the cell pack, and just pop it up a little bit to get that above planter and then after that we're gonna as gently as we can pull it out now some of the roots have actually gone through the bottom so ripping them out a little bit I kind of can't avoid but you want to do your best to keep everything nice and intact okay so we got the plant out of the uh, little cell pack in there so what we're gonna do is just pinch the roots just the tiniest bit all I'm looking to do is to kind of spread out those roots a little bit and just shock it the tiniest bit so it'll uh, it be encouraged to root once it gets the roots to travel once it gets into the soil. So now that we're looking at the planter, I'm just going to, in the case of these pots, most of the time I just use my finger. You can use a small shovel, but you just want to make a hole slightly bigger in your plant. I'm going to put it in there nice and gently. What you're going to do Kind to coat the top. I'm not going to press it down too hard. I'm just going to get it in there, coat it, and then what we're going to do is just very, very gently pat it down just to make sure there's good root contact between the roots and the fresh potting soil they're going into. That's it. I'm not jamming it down, just a light pat. Okay. Now, once we have these planted, we want to make sure they're watered. So using a water can or a hose on a very fine like spray setting or something like that, you're just going to wet these plants. You're not going to soak them, but you're going to get them nice and damp. And especially when they're young and first put into the pots in the ground, you want to keep an eye on them uh, to make sure they're always watered. Again, you don't want to you want to drown them, but you just want to make sure they constantly have enough water. Now, a uh, good thing to mention um, before you actually put your plants out, especially if they're in pots like this, is to just be aware of what their light requirements. So the seed packet that you got um, when we started the project will have the light requirements, whether it's partial, like whether it's shade or sun or full sun. In the case of most vegetables and flowers and stuff like that, it's going to be full sun. But just double check the back of that packet. Uh, also, another thing you want to keep an eye on is the spacing between plants. So if you were starting a big vegetable garden um, and you had tomatoes, you want to keep them a certain distance apart. And like I said, the back of that seed packet will have it. If by any chance that seed packet isn't around anymore, these are things you can go look up online if you know the names of vegetables you were planting. Thank you all for watching uh, our last video in our seed starting series. Uh, if you haven't caught up on the other videos and you'd like to see them, just check out the Sage and Public Library's YouTube channel. Again, uh, thanks for watching and good luck with your gardening.